so you're you're becoming grateful for your pain. Is that what I'm hearing you say? And, and yeah, the losses I am. Your, I'm yeah. grateful for it. How does gratitude change you? Living in a in in gratitude allows you to see all the good. And when you see the good, you feel the good. You start doing good. Good mm -hmm. things start happening, and then the miracles start to unfold. Hi, I'm Eric Weir, and welcome to another episode of Stuttering Your Way to Success. And today I'm with my very special guest, Katie Mars. Katie is the author of Custom Her Experience, as well as many other things. So, so, so Katie, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Tell me about Custom Her Experience. Oh, gosh. I mean, listen, she is the world's economy. She influences $43 trillion of worldwide spending annually. And she influences three to four generations of purchases. So if you are not paying attention to her as you build your customer experience, then you are losing. You are losing your number one referral source. Wow. Wow. So tell me about five steps to a five star experience. Oh, well, I mean, everybody wants the easy button, right? Like right, doesn't right. every organization. I think there's no easy button. I mean, <laughs> we're already, we're at steps here already. We're like one step would be great, but five yeah, steps. Five yeah. steps. You know, it's funny. Um, Forbes has a gazillion data points in order to get a five star. That's that you have to, these organizations have to hit every single time consistently. Mm -hmm. I got, I, I had the complete honor to work alongside Forbes in designing the cruise industry's five-star rating system. Mm -hmm. And out of all of the, what felt like a gazillion steps that these folks need to take in order to get a five-star, there were these commonalities. And so I've sort of dwindled it down to five, you know, five things you need to do. And if you do these things with every customer, every time, your customer will be more than satisfied. They will be, they will love the experience they're receiving from you. So we, 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 we talk uh, on our show, we talk about um, there is no success without setback. Have you had any, any, any setbacks that you've, you've had to overcome? And, and when, when, you, when you had them, what, what did you learn? Oh my gosh, I have so many setbacks. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> Like, like, like for real, where do we start? And do we yeah, have yeah, like five yeah. hours to talk? Yeah, we have some time. Go ahead. <laughs> All the setbacks. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was at the top of my game. Um, this is most recent. I was at the top of my game uh, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I got into a relationship uh, gone bad. Mm -hmm. um, I was with this man for four years and I thought, oh, I found my eternity and, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, so I, I stopped doing my thing, stopped building my brand. I put mm -hmm. my all into our relationship and his business. And I mean, financially, I mean, personally, I, I helped run the businesses and my focus was mm -hmm. him, our family, the businesses, and I gave everything I had. Well, mm -hmm. Everyone thought, I mean, because social media shows just wonderful um, snippets of how great your life is. Right, uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> well, what they didn't see and what nobody saw because I kept it very silent was that I was suffering in a relationship of, of domestic abuse. Um, physical, Whoa. yeah, physical, mental, emotional, um, financial, all of the above. Mm -hmm. And so I just recently about 110 days ago started taking my first steps forward of how you know towards my freedom and healing and um with that was gosh torn down i'm in you know litigation getting my money back out of the companies that i've invested in and i was left with not a penny so you want to talk about a setback whoa that is like you're not you're not playing around that's the real no, deal yeah it's the real yeah. deal i was so cheerful so so how important is your faith to you oh you, you know, <laughs> what's your rock tell me about that <sighs> my rock heavenly father god the, the man above is my rock um i i <laughs> with this setback i had two choices I could um, be a victim, which I was, I could act like a victim. Um, I am a victim, but I had two choices. I could act like one or I could lean on God and lean on faith and um, 
come closer to him. And so that's what I did. Uh, faith mm. is, is, is everything for mm. me. Mm. I am as part of my morning routine. I read scriptures. I pray my, my bedtime routine. I, I do the same. I journal, I put gratitude. Um, my prayer list for individuals is like a million miles long. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, uh, I had to believe that everything that happened to me was happened for me. Mm. And the only way to really believe that there, the reason I lived in that, the reason I was discarded, the reason I was struggling right now is because I meant for something bigger and better. And I have to believe that the strength and the gifts, the gifts of speech, um, the gifts of writing, um, the platform that I have, the people that follow me, the women that, you know, look up to me. I have to believe that I was put through that type of refiner's fire so that I could help those women that are being silent. So one in three women are 35% of the female population is in a domestic abuse, abusive relationship. Wow, that's I had no idea. That's and, huge. Yeah, seventy-seven percent of those women stay silent. Wow, wow, that's why you don't hear about it. That's that's huge. That's huge. Wow, that's a massive change. So, so you're you're becoming grateful for your pain. Is that what I'm hearing you say? And, and yeah, the loss I am. Grateful. I'm yeah. grateful for it. I'm grateful. Yes. How does gratitude change you? Oh. Yeah, you have. So I, I believe you have two choices every day when you wake up. Um, you you can choose to view the, the, the world in a positive way or in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, you can't control the hand of cards you're dealt. Not always. Sometimes you can. Mm -hmm. But you sure as heck can control how you play that hand of cards. Right. And right, so right. gratitude and living in, a, in, in gratitude allows you to see all the good. And when you see the good, you feel the good, you start doing good, good mm -hmm. things start happening. When you look at the negative, when you don't, when you're not grateful for what you have and, mm -hmm. and what you have could be a cup of coffee, what you have could be the sun is shining, what you right. have, right. Um, like today, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, I had to sell my engagement ring to pay rent, right? So today I walked out of the bank and I was like, I got to pay rent. Like I've never been in this position before in my entire life. But today I'm grateful because I paid rent and I have a roof over my head. And so gratitude because one of two things could have happened today i could have been like oh my goodness i can't believe i had to sell such a precious piece of jewelry i can't believe that i don't have the money to you know i'm not making the money right now i'm, I'm not i don't have a job i'm fighting litigation i'm doing all these things i could sit in that but where would that get me that would just mm. i'd be standing still and or going backwards mm. Mm. and so when you're grateful you start to see the good and then the miracles start to unfold. Wow. That's so, so powerful. So, so needed. We can all relate to that. So, so how, um, how does becoming a parent change you as well? Because I know you're a parent. I am. It has to change you, right? So how, um, how does that change you? It's changed. It's changed me in so many ways. I always say that I don't have the natural mom gene. Um, so both my parents were addicts um, when I grew up. I raised my brother and sister. Um, I really didn't have a, a family to or a parental example to, to fall back on. Right. And so when I decided I was going to have babies, I swear I, I swore I'd be the opposite Mm -hmm. to my fam, to, to what right. I was raised in and to an extreme. I don't know if it's a healthy extreme, but it's, right. it's a, more love and more, more, um, time. And, and I, you know, I'm the mom that bakes the croissants in the morning and they get fresh lunches. That does me. Um, it's so great. I mean, <laughs> but it's changed me because there's more for you. There's more for you to fight for. You can't stumble and stay on the ground. You can't right. smack your face on the ground and not, or scrape your knees and not get back up because you have these little beings that A, are watching you. Mm -hmm. So that example and, and B, you have to provide, you have to, right. Right. That's you right. have to. And so all of a sudden the things that maybe you thought were impossible become possible because mm -hmm. you're in charge of these little lives. Wow. 
So encouraging, so encouraging. Um, how, w w when you work with companies and you teach them to, to, to connect to their customer, what tips would you have somebody who's listening to this and they're trying to start a business? And I mean, how do you find the needs of your customer? How do you communicate with them? How, how, how do you message? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to go circle back to the five steps to a five-star experience. First of all, you you do need to understand your customer journey. That's that's the very first, you know, what are the moments and the touch points over time through time that your customer interacts with you while, she, while he or she is doing business with you? You have to understand every single one of those touch points. And then once those touch points are um, identified, take those touch points individually. And you need to break down the operational standards, so the systems, the processes that you need to get get through to make sure that that touch point works seamless. You need to look at your experiential standards. So that's the five steps to a five star experience. How do you make it an experience that they're going to remember? Right. And then how do you anticipate their needs and deliver that plus one? How do you take that experience and take it up a notch? And then, of course, how do you service recover when it goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Because it will go wrong because we're humans and we're not bots. Right. I mean, we're going to drop the ball. So how do you protect that relationship, that loyal customer, even when there is a failure in the service you're providing? And so you break it down by touch point and you, you design these standards by each one of these touch points, which then in my, you know, the way I say it is it becomes your brand experience playbook. Mm -hmm. And then you train that out. Um, but if you don't understand who your customer is mm -hmm. and the touch points through time that they mm -hmm. take and, and interact with you, then it's going to be very hard to to get into any nitty gritty or into how you message them. You really have to understand who they are and how they're interacting with you. Wow. 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 How important is clarity? I mean, I mean, clarity of who your customer is and, and clarity of your own objectives as a business owner. And then lastly, kind of how do you get there? Because so many people seem to like want to grow. I want to do this. I want to advance. But they seem to have a hard time to, 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 get, to, to get to something clear. Do, do you have any suggestions on, on how you go about getting to clarity? Yeah. I mean, eat some humble pie, number one. Mm -hmm. You know, look at yourself in the mirror. Um, if you can't be honest with yourself, you're never going to be clear. It doesn't matter what decision choice you're, you're trying to make. You have to own, you know, the part you play in the mess that you're in, um, whether it's a mess of, of the mind of understanding what your business is or a mess of the mind of your relationships. Um, you really just have to be able to look in the mirror and say, okay, um, what is it that I truly want? So if you can't be that, if you can't be clear and honest with yourself, then mm -hmm. for, forget about it. Um, That's but, yeah. So I would say, number one, be honest, be honest with yourself about what you truly want from a business perspective or what you truly want to deliver for your customers and write it down. Have some quiet moments. Um, it's really easy. And I and I get swept up into this all the time. It's super easy with the whirlwind and the tornado of life. There's so many things going on, instant gratification, social media, all the tasks that need to be done. Um, we need to just have those moments to be super quiet and to mm -hmm. take time to readjust and to adjust the clarity of our product, our customer, our life vision, our life goals. When I talk to people, your beliefs are really important. And a lot of people believe things that maybe they heard as a child, like you mm -hmm. won't amount to anything or you'll never accomplish this, mm -hmm. or, you know, your family's known for this particular thing. When you work with people who, who believe lies about themselves, mm -hmm. How do you address that or for other people and really for yourself too? I mean, we, we, how do you deal with your own belief system? Yeah, that's like, like imposter syndrome. It's um, the negative stories we tell ourselves. Again, that goes, it goes back to being humble and honest uh, and really looking back and questioning, well, this is what's come up. This is the story I'm telling myself. Um, is it true? And really answer that question, because most of the time it's not. And if you are feeling like I'm not enough, you need to catch that and then you need to throw it away and replace it with a positive affirmation. I am enough. I am worthy. I am so capable 
that it's not even funny. Um, one practice I do every single day with my gratitude is I have an actual statement I write out every single day and I tell myself how awesome I am. You know, I'm, I'm capable, I'm smart, I'm an, an amazing mom, I, I'm worthy of all my wildest dreams, I'm, um, I'm successful, all the things. And I write this affirmation every single morning. Now, when you come up against tough times, the one affirmation that's helped me a ton is only good can come from this situation. Okay. So again, is making the mental note, catching the story first. That's the very first step is a lot of times we don't even realize the negative self-talk. It just becomes habit. It's habitual. We, we just do it. And then we think that's the way life should be, but it is, it's not, you have to be able to catch it. Mm -hmm throw it away and replace it with something that's positive. Hmm. And it takes a ton of time. It's a muscle. It's a muscle you have to flex. You have to choose sure. to work that muscle to get rid of those bad habits. Right, 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 right. So, so uh, if you could go back and talk to your, your 25 year old self mm -hmm. and give yourself advice, knowing what you now know, we all wish you could go back and talk to that person. But if you could go back and talk to your 25 year old self, yeah. what would you say? Gosh. Well, at 25, I was just getting married. I'd just been married. I probably wouldn't have gotten married, number one. <laughs> I would have been like, take your time. You don't know yourself yet. You're right. so young. You haven't even discovered who Katie is. So I would, I would say that to her. Um, but I would also say is know your worth because you're worth so much more than you, than you let yourself believe. And the ceiling you put, the ceiling that is on top of you is put there by you. It's not put there by anybody else mm -hmm. because you have the ability to remove it. You have the ability to break through it. So if you know your worth, then you know, there's no ceiling. Mm. That's so true. So true. How can time, talent, and treasure be used in, in, in your view to, to help other people. And I guess there's varying times you have, sometimes you have some more treasure, sometimes you have more time, sometimes you have more talent. So how, it, no matter where you are in life, I mean, how, how do you choose to, to apply yourself to help others? Oh gosh. So I believe, uh, as I, we said, you know, earlier in this, in this podcast that I believe that I've been given this gift, um, the gift of communication. I've been given the gift of hardships. Um, so that I can help other people, gift of a platform. And uh, I believe that my, ta you said time, talent, and treasure, right? My talent is the gift of communication, storytelling, and my platform as a speaker, as an author. Over time, I have been, I've been able to hone in on those gifts that I didn't even know were there. So through time, we, you know, those, those talents, we, we, we can choose to continuously hone them as long as we see them. Mm -hmm. And, and how I use that to help other people is I like to plant like light posts. I like to, to light the way. So if, if my hardship or, or I've stumbled or I've fallen or I've staggered or whatever has happened in my world, and I've learned something from it, I like to talk about it so that I can Mm -hmm. direct this, this bright light mm -hmm. and then stack another beside it and another beside it and another beside it. And it just paves a, a brightly lit path for anybody behind me so they can walk a little smoother. And the only way that happens is through time, right? It's mm -hmm. so I think time is something that it, you can't get it back. So it has to be used in a valuable way. The other thing is, is you can't dwell on it. You can't look at time and say, oh, well, crap, I didn't do that. Well, you know what? Yesterday, five minutes ago, a minute ago, I ain't getting that back. So I'm going to focus on the next minute and the next half hour and the next hour. And mm -hmm. so taking those baby steps and looking at time as a gift, as a treasure, mm -hmm. when you look at time as your treasure and then you marry that with your talent and you hone that talent along the way, um, you really can have the most beautiful, successful life. Mm. At least in my opinion, I hope I answered your question. Well, that's fantastic. That's great. That's great. 
So, so I, I talk to people all the time and I always ask them, you know, is there such thing as a balanced life or is there a life that you seek to live in harmony? So in your view, is there balance or is there more harmony? And how do you structure time and with all the, and we, we talk about it on our show, the five F's, faith, obviously is important to you, mm -hmm. faith, family, fitness, finance, and friends. So how do you balance that in, in, or, or find harmony in, in, in those areas? Yeah, I don't know that there is um, like a true balance. Like, a, I mean, I think at some point in your life, something's more important than others. Like, right. Um, you know, right now, faith is extremely important to me, but I don't um, let it get in the way of my family and my friends and, you know, my finances. It's actually helping me. Um, so I don't know that there is a, a true, true balance. But what I do is I make people a priority. I make all sorts of people a priority and, and we only have so much time. I, I don't like when people say, well, I did, I don't have the time to mm -hmm. do this. Well, no, let's just be real. Let's be honest. It just wasn't a priority because we make time for things that are important to us. That's right. right. So sometimes, you know, my friends will say, well, you're scheduling me in. I don't want to be scheduled in. I'm like, actually, if you, there's another way to look at that is like, wow, she's right. making time for me. Mm -hmm. And so how I do it, honestly, I break down my day by the half hour. I'm not even joking. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, I break it down. I plan it in the morning after I've done my gratitude and my prayers and my scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, gone through my, my intentions. And then I break down my day by the half hour. So I know what I'm doing, who I'm devoting my time to, mm -hmm. um, whether it's faith or to my finances and sales, or it's, you know, friends and family. Like I, I put everything in there and I, I don't know that I'm in perfect balance, but I, I do live pretty harmoniously. That's great. That's great. So, 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 so um, w w w when you're speaking to people and audiences and you're a public speaker, I mean, how do you uh, address and educate people uh, about a topic where we talked about earlier before, you, before we, we aired was uh, so a, a ladies taking control. So, so what does that mean? Yeah, so um, Ladies Take Control was born, you know, about 103 days ago. Um, so it was born out of my darkness. And somebody, you know, got on the phone with me, one of my dear friends and mentors um, decided, you know, I'm going to give her a swift kick in the in the rear right. end and said, um, hey, it's time to take off your sad girl pants and put on your badass pants. And it's time to use your gifts. And with that came Ladies Take Control. And what it is, is it's ever evolving. It's so exciting. Um, we have online virtual events. We had our first one December 15th with over 250 women. It was incredible. Incredible. Wow, well, you're off to a fast start. Congratulations. Yes, it was incredible. And we had speakers like Laura Langmeyer and Sharon Lecter. And um, we had we had uh, Elena Cardone was our closing keynote speaker. So it was it was wow. amazing. Yeah, it was incredible. Good for you, yeah. And um, my podcast, Ladies Take Control, launches on International Women's Day. So I've been picked up, we've been picked up by a network, and our podcast launches on March 8th. Our oh, second really? event, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Our second event is, right, right. yes, yeah. June 14th is our second event. And actually for any of your listeners, female listeners, I'd like to extend a free ticket to that event. So I'll give you a link that you can put in your show notes or whatever, yeah, and they can click on that and, yeah. and come on board for that event. And what's cool is it's a virtual event, but it's recorded. Um, during the event, it's all recorded. So if you can't make the event, you'll get the recording. Okay. So there's no excuse to come on and be inspired and learn about financial literacy, literacy, learn how the art of negotiation, learn how to step into your power, learn about energetic healing. It's an incredible all day event. It's amazing. Explain energetic healing. What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> so we are like a we have a six foot radius of energy around us. We are a ball of li like literal energy, atoms and protons and neutrons and all the things that are moving around us all the time. And that classic saying of what you put out is what you get back mm -hmm. is most literally true. Like the pheromones, the energy that you feel in your heart space, everything that you put out in the world 
you're asking for it to come back to you is, is a magnetic and energy energetic field. And so in energetic healing, you have to heal. And this goes back to like the, um, the negative self-talk, right? The stories we tell ourselves, if you think you're not worthy, you're going to attract people that will make you feel not worthy. You're going to attract situations because that's what you are energetically putting out there. And so when you heal energetically, you're changing your mindset, you're shifting your power and your focus to something more positive. And all of a sudden you have, oh, I think I'm amazing and I'm worthy. So I can stand in a room and I'm going to attract this person. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to attract that person. Mm -hmm. And now this opportunity has come my way. And the only thing that has shifted is your energy and your belief in yourself. So energetic healing is exactly what it is, is healing your energy from a negative to a positive mm -hmm. and, to, and to vibrate your energy at a higher level rather than a lower level. That's fantastic. So, so how do you make that transition? Like I am aware, system is aware I've got low energy and you're talking about morning thoughts and affirmations and, this isn't going my way. I'll be grateful. So, I mean, you know, how, how do you start that journey? It's a choice. It's a decision. I was on the phone with a friend this morning and she's going through a rough time. She has a narcissistic soon to be ex-husband. And she's like, I, I'm, she just feels like a victim. And she's just like, I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm like, okay, he wins. You're, you're just sitting there. Right. She's like, I'm like, can I be honest with you? And she's like, yeah, I said, it's your choice. You can't control the hand of cards you're dealt, but you can control how you play them. Right. And so it's, it's as simple as a choice. Okay. Choose to think more positively, choose to do the hard work, choose to flex, flex that muscle, choose to flex it every time it's hard and keep choosing it, but it's a choice. Right. Right. That's fair. Good stuff. That's great. That's great. What have you learned in your role as, as an author? Oh gosh. I, oh, if you had asked my grade five self that failed every single spelling test, <laughs> <laughs> I, I never, I never thought that I would ever have authored or penned a book or any sort of article or anything right. ever. Right. Um, so what I've learned is that you're capable of anything. Mm -hmm and you're only setting your own limitations mm -hmm. and that there's really good editors out there that can make you sound amazing. So. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. So it's AI. We talked about that before with AI, with, with where's knowing the consumer or, or for writing or you know, for, for doing, you know, analyzing things. Yeah. What's your view on AI? Do you use it at all? Or is it a tool? Is it a, is it a crutch? What's yeah. So I think AI should be a tool. I think it is a crutch for a lot of people, I think, and for businesses. I think AI is a wonderful thing. Um, I think there's extremes that are happening right now. And that is organizations are not all, but a lot of organizations are just, I, for, I mean, for better or worse, or for, you know, reducing staff costs or trying to make things easier, or maybe we're lazy. I don't know why, but we're completely consumed with what AI can do for us. Um, but from a customer experience perspective, our customers aren't bots, so we can't use bots to serve them. Um, they're humans, so we can't forget about the human interaction. So I think AI is a wonderful thing. It should be a tool, not a crutch. And we should be looking for ways to marry the experience we provide our customers. And I mean, even with writing, with writing, with posts, I can now see online a post that's written by chat GPT like this. Like I know exactly. Right. Right, right, right. So we're are, we're already taking the human out of this content and the content, I mean, is it, I mean, I guess it's valuable, but we can all go Google it. We're taking the je ne sais quoi out of, out of the content that's out there. The personality is gone. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. all the same, but we're not as humans. Right. So right. I think we have to find a way to marry, use it as a tool and not a crutch. That's right. That's right. How do you set goals? I mean, obviously you're, you're a goal oriented person. You're an author, you're in your pain and, and two you, 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 you started ladies take control and had a big 250 people first time. Congratulations. So Thank you. How, how do you set goals? And then how do you stay on point with those goals? Yeah. 
I'm pretty clear on what I want to achieve. That's number one is you've just got to be really clear on that. Um, and then from that, I, I take the, the, I have like, I have a gazillion things I want to achieve, but like I narrow it down to the top five things I want to achieve. And then I look at the five things I have to do every day in order to achieve them. And then I, I actually have walls upon walls of post-it notes. And sure. yes, yes. So my book is on my wall and it's all post-it notes by chapter. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. My, uh, my daily, you know, in order to bring, like I rebranded this year, ladies take control has happened. We have an app in the making right now for ladies take control. We have all the things, but every day, the things I need to do. So there's the goal and then the five things I need to do in order to achieve that goal on a daily basis. And so I just look every day and I say, okay, I, and they're right in front of me. And I'm like, this is what I have to do. And I bake it into that lovely schedule that I do by the half hour to right. make sure that I get it all done. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, Katie, thank you so very much for joining me today. I've, I've learned so much. I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm, I'm sure our, our, our listeners will be as well. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's Katie Mars. Her book is Custom Her Experience. And check her out on, on, on her podcast, Ladies Take Control. Thank you. Thank you.